Hey everybody, it's Joe with Jade Lake Photo. Uh, sorry I haven't uploaded a video in about a week or two. Um, I've been super sick. You can hear it in my voice still. Uh, I'm still just getting over it. But I'm taking this weekend to be on the mend and try and feel a little bit better. But the reason that I wanted to make this video is because there is uh, a huge, huge bit of news out there right now about the new, uh, the supposedly new Canon R series, the EOS R, the new Canon mirrorless, uh, as well as a couple of lenses. So I wanted to dive into the specifications and just kind of figure out where this thing is going to fit in terms of the current EOS line and the current mirrorless options out there from Sony and now from Nikon. Uh, so let's dive in. So 30.3 megapixels, full frame, mirrorless camera from Canon. It will have a new mount, the RF mount. So you'll have the RF mount and the EF mount. I haven't seen much mention about adapting the EFS or the, uh, the image sensor will be compatible with the Canon dual pixel AF auto focusing systems, uh, which I've talked about a lot. Uh, and I, I think that's a must have in these systems. I'm really glad that they're bringing it over from the EOS line. Uh, having it in my 6D Mark II is actually the, the primary reason why I bought that. Um, I'll post the video uh, about when I bought that camera, what my primary motivations for it were. It also looks like it's going to be shooting in both JPEG and RAW, but it also mentions a new C RAW format. So it looks like Canon is going to be coming out with a new RAW format for some reason. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but it also will have their dual pixel RAW uh, format available to you for, uh, for making those micro adjustments similar to what you have on the 5D Mark IV. Also interesting to see here that it mentions UHS-1 cards for high-speed shooting, but there's no mention specifically in the specifications of a UHC-2 uh, or UH, UHS-2 card, so I don't know if this is going to actually be compatible with high-speed cards. This camera will also have three customizable programming modes, which actually is really nice. On the, the 60 Mark II, I only have two, but on my former camera, my 7D, I actually had three, and there are some times where I find that I'm actually I'm missing that. Uh, especially when I go, want to go between two different video modes that I have programmed and maybe have a third for a specific um, photo mode. Um, so it's nice to have that additional option. I wish it would just let you use the entire dial for custom mode to just do seven or eight. That would be really cool. Also, it looks like the electronic viewfinder that's going to be coming on this camera will give you a 0.71 magnification, which actually, if you think about that, it means that the screen will be a little bit smaller in your view, which might make it a little bit easier to see everything that you're looking at. I know that um, a lot of people were happy to see that the Nikons had, I think, a 0.8 or 0.81 uh, magnification, which made it just easier to see. So it looks like Canon's going even smaller. It also looks like they're jam-packing a lot of information in this EVF. There's going to be a ton of stuff that you can actually see or program to see on this um, on this electronic viewfinder, this OLED viewfinder. One of the bits of information on this spec sheet that I'm kind of questioning um, and that I really want to see when they release this camera is that it, it mentions having over 5,000 autofocus points that they'll go 100% horizontal and about 88% vertical in the viewfinder. That is bonkers uh, if that is actually true. So I'm really kind of curious to see if that's the case, but if that is the case, that would be just amazing to have that much control, have that much uh, autofocus capability in a new mirrorless camera. With that, it'll be coming with uh, face autofocus, the face detect autofocus, nothing about eye detection, the face autofocus system that's coming with most of the existing uh, top end EOS cameras as well as single point focus, zone autofocus, and the expanded zone autofocus. So that's nice. Nothing new there, really, from what we're normally getting on the EOS uh, D series. Also, it looks like this camera is going to be able to autofocus at six stops under EV, uh, which means that you'll be able to autofocus in very, very dark environments. I'm going to guess that's going to be coming from the fact that it's got so many autofocus points uh, that it will be able to work together to find contrast points to focus on. I know that one of the things that I have a hard time with is focusing in low light situations. Once I take the shot, the shots look great, but getting a solid focus sometimes can be difficult, especially when you're shooting at high speed. So two points about this camera that I find interesting is the, the speed, the frame rate. So it's gonna be shooting at eight frames a second in single point focus. So if you're doing one shot, single point focus, it'll shoot up to eight frames a second. And that's also only if the stabilizer, the electronic stabilizer is disabled. 
if you need tracking AF, if you need moving AF and you're shooting at high speed, the max you're gonna get is three frames a second. That's not great. That's not awesome. Um, really, that's kind of disappointing. But the Nikons we're coming out with with nine to 12 and, and just eight and three is just, that's not a great number. That's a really low number from Canon and I hope that, uh, I hope I'm wrong about this information and I'm hoping that they come out with an update that improves that number. On the video side, like I said, it's gonna have that dual pixel autofocus, which is gonna be great with face detection, which is awesome. It will also have the flip out screen like the 6D Mark II and the ADD have, which that's awesome. Uh, flip out, touch screen, excellent. The Nikon doesn't have that. I think that's gonna be a great opportunity for vloggers and video shooters to have that flexibility. But here's the downside. 4K shooting, it will have 4K shooting, but at max 30 frames a second. I was really hoping to see 60 frames a second on the 4K side with this camera, but at this point, we'll, we'll take what we can get, I guess, from Canon. It'll also, of course, shoot at 24 frames a second, and at 1080p, it will shoot at 60 frames a second. So no 1080p 120, although they have added a 720p at 120. I don't know who's gonna use that, honestly. Real disappointment there on the frame rates for the lower resolution video and not having 4K 60. It's also got a max shutter speed of 1 8 thousandths. Again, the same as what you're finding on most of your Canon bodies, but unfortunately, they didn't take the opportunity to take a mirrorless camera and use the electronic shutter and actually increase that to maybe 1 16 thousandths. Also looks like the sensor's gonna have a native ISO of 40,000. So you'll have 100 to 40,000, which I guess is okay. We're getting 51,200 out of the Nikons, so just okay from Canon. All right, so I'll probably do another video where I actually talk about the lenses that are gonna be coming with this camera, but they have announced a handful of lenses. Some of them look like pretty fast glass, uh, so that'll be good. Um, and one other thing is that it will be, they will have a couple of different adapters available at launch. We don't have a lot of information about that, although it will be an EOS EF2 EOS R uh, mount adapter. Uh, and it looks like there will be some options for um, all the kind of controls that you would need on your camera. Uh, that thing better come out at a great price and you better be able to get it at a discount when you buy the camera because if, or even include it in the camera box. Uh, Cause if they don't do that, this thing is gonna be dead uh, on arrival. Especially when you look at the things that um, Nikon is doing and the options that you can get with Sony now. The other question we don't have an answer for is price. Uh, at this point, considering the specifications, where it lines up with the EOS line, um, this thing better come in under $2,000. If this is gonna come in at $24.99 or $27.99 or $34.99, again, dead in the water. Uh, I'm thinking $17.99, maybe $16.99 is where this camera needs to be. Uh, I hope you agree. If you don't, let me know in the comments. Like I said, I'll do another video about the lenses, um, but just videos like this, oh, taking it out of me because I am still sick and so I need to go lie down. So uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll put my face right here, go ahead and Click on this link for some how-to videos and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.